Hello everybody and welcome to Woobercast episode 35. As always, I'm your host, Joe Yates, and you might be wondering, where has Woobercast been for the little last few months? Um, I posted an update video, should have gone up yesterday. You guys can read the explanations there, or listen to the explanations there even. Uh, it should cover everything. Long story short though, the podcast kind of thing isn't really necessarily working out. It's not necessarily the kind of content I want to make, or that I think for the most part, like, that my audience wants to see. Um, so I'm basically moving it into, as opposed to it's going to be weekly or fortnightly, it's just going to be whenever I have something to discuss, I'm going to do it and label it as a Woobercast episode, and that's really how it's going to go from here. It means the quality of them will improve as well, because sometimes there's not always anything to discuss, and then we go a week without a podcast episode, or we get one and it's not very good. So long story short, that's what happens. That's what's happened to the podcast aspect of the channel anyway. Any more information you want, guys, there was a video up yesterday that'll describe everything that's been going on with the channel and what's going to happen in the future. So... But that's not what we're here to talk about today. We're going to be talking about the brand new set. Did you see the fighting rainbow and light consuming darkness? Japan, you kill it with the names. Can we please just get, like, what? It's called, like, Burning Shadows or something over in English. That's, like, all right. But this is dope. Did you see the fighting rainbow and light consuming darkness? Um, so, this is a brand new set we're getting. Uh, it releases on August 4th over our end, as it says right here. Thank you, Boko Beach. And basically, it's going to be our SM3 set. It won't be legal until next rotation. Probably legal for World Championships. I don't know. They always sort of decide that on a case-by-case -case basis. So I guess we're just going to roll with it. Um, but I'm going to be going through some of the highlights here or some of the cards that I think are worth pointing out at least. It's not going to be a full set review as always. I just kind of do these off the cuff. And I just sort of pick out the videos that I think are the... Or the cards at least that I think are the most interesting to look at initially. So first one we're going to be looking at is Tangrowth. Um, Tangrowth's been getting a little bit of hype. Okay, by a little bit of hype, I mean Ross from PGCG Radio made a video on it. <laughs> that doesn't necessarily mean it's getting a little bit of hype, but um, ah, we love you, Ross. So, Tang Growth has 140 HP, cool attack for one grass energy, does 30 damage, and heals the damage you did to the defending Pokemon from itself. So, the cool thing about this is, obviously, Promo Lorantis exists, so you could potentially hit for, like, 20, 40, 60. Three Promo Lorantis in play is 90 damage, plus a Choice Ban means you're hitting 420 damage. You know, for one grass energy, that's quite good. That's like, you know, a solid trade-off. Uh, Kukui there, you've got 140. You know, you're hitting big numbers. Uh, and that's always good for a single basic energy on a stage one with 140 HP. Uh, so you're going to survive a few hits. I think in general you should still expect to get knocked out. Though, from, especially from like mid-game to late-game. Uh, it's not going to be surviving things over and over again like you'd want it to. I suppose you could play Muscle Dumbbells with it, but that's way riskier. Uh, given that Field Blower exists, and also I'd rather just hit for more damage, basically, is how I see it, at least. Um, I think it's going to be a bit of an awkward deck to build, since you'd be running like 4-4 four, four lines of both Tangrowth and Loranthus, and then you, on top of that, would need things like Tapu Lele, probably, um, just to get Bridget's turn 1 and stuff like this. Uh, I don't know what else you'd throw into the deck, maybe like... Maybe one of the Loranthus GXs as well, just because you can, like, why wouldn't you? Uh, you'd probably want to play Skyfield over Forest of Giant Plants, though, because four Lorantis promo sitting on your bench is ideally what you're going for, and you're not going to get that if you just play uh, Forest of Giant Plants, because then you have only one bench space for you left for like a Lele or a backup tang Tangela. But that's basically how I see it going. This is the Tangela. He's pretty cute. Uh, he hasn't got much going for him, but he's pretty cute. He's got Bind Down, which can't means you can't retreat next turn. Uh, it's kind of useful, especially when you've, you know, again, Choice Band plus... From all around, this means even one grass for ten can get something done, so don't sleep on it, basically. Uh, but that's Tang Growth. It's not major, but it's kind of cool, and it could be a little fun deck to try out. Uh, next one's going to be Galissapod GX. This thing is a bit weird. It's hard to say whether it's good or not, I think. Uh, first impression, does 30 damage plus 90 more if it became your active. Like, for me, that's just great. Like, that's a great attack. It's really easy to set up, like I said, a bit like the Tangela thing. Um, you just play with Promo Lorances, except this thing has, like, a way higher damage output. So it kind of ruins everything I just said about Tangrowth. Uh, but other than that, basically, that's, like, really good. You're hitting for a ton of damage, no problem. Would you want to... Like, the, the three retreat kind of puts me off, because if you want to keep using this attack, you need to probably have a float stone on it, or you need to play it with, like, Zorork, which means then you're playing Zorork and Promo Lorantis, and then you're like, oh, that's a bit awkward. But, I don't know, that's up to yourselves, really. There's going to be a lot of different deck-building kind of things you can go with with this. Um, I like it, though. 120 plus all the extras on top is going to start hitting some crazy numbers for a single basic energy, which I like. 
100 damage armor press honestly in comparison looks pretty lackluster like 100 damage is nice and the reducing 20 next turn like it's cool but it's not like like have you seen first impression that's way better i would be building the deck around this as opposed to armor press uh coke Ross gx is pretty great as well you're probably going to get a ko with this and then you can send up like i don't know wava fed a pukamuku whatever takes your fancy uh, and it fits in with the first attack so I think it's got some potential at least, and it's definitely going to be one I'm going to play around with, and I think a lot of people are going to play around with, because it's not obviously bad or anything like that. It's pretty cool, and with Guzma around as well, it makes the switching thing a lot easier. Um, but then you have to play it every turn, and you know, there's, there's a lot of things you need to think about here. Uh, I think it'd be weird to build a deck with it, and it's probably also a reason why you should run like Switch over Floatstone in a deck like this as well. Um, well, both, actually. So you can switch into something with a float zone. Tapu Koko promo makes a ton of sense as well, because it's got free retreat, and you can get 20 damage on everything easily enough. Uh, yeah, it's going to be a cool deck. That's my point. Uh, don't play against Volcanion, but it's going to be a cool deck. So what's next? It's going to be Gyarados. Blast Apart does 50 damage times the number of Magikarp in your discard pile. This could be a one-off in current Gyarados lists. I could see that happening easily. Uh... Especially the Tapu Koko promo can basically wipe out a whole bench full of Magikarps. If you do manage to have one that survives, you can just go into this thing and then start hitting for 180 with a choice band. Uh, and Koko promo and Decidueye and things like that become less good. Especially Decidueye, because this thing has 150 HP. And Decidueye is hitting like 90 plus 2 abilities is like, you know, 130. That's still not a KO. Like, it's... It's probably not going to win you the matchup, don't get me wrong. But I think it's it's cool that it's like a little help for these things that have been annoying Gyarados lately. Um, I say that after it wins Birmingham Regionals, of course, but you know what I mean. It's We're finally at a point where people are starting to counter this, like, to some extent. So uh, I think this is like a counter for the counters almost. And the space is there. Everyone only runs three Gyarados anyway, so you've got the room for the fourth one, no issue. I don't think it's a bad thing is the point I'm trying to make. Uh, I will briefly point out Raichu. When you evolve into it, it does 50 damage. Or not, doesn't do, well, that'd be amazing, wouldn't it? No, it doesn't do 50 damage. It paralyzes your opponent's active Pokemon. That's real good. That's just real good. We had Servine that did this before, but it was on a coin flip. It's just really good. I mean, paralysis is probably the best status condition in the game. So, you know, why wouldn't you play this? Uh, would I put it in current Raichu builds? Like, no, because I want to be taking one-hit KOs with those. And also, I don't want three Raichu as my main attacker. I want four of them. So, I don't know what you'd play it in, but the fact that it exists is cool, at least. Let, let's go with that. What else we got? I will point out Survivor very briefly as well, just because it's got a really cool ability. Uh, again, it's it, this all comes. This is a bit like the Raichu thing in that it's great ability. Like no one's gonna argue with that. But what do you play it in? Like I mean, it's really fun. It's really cool. And we've already seen this historically be really good with like Verbank City. And Hypnotoxic Laser. We don't have Hypnotoxic Laser anymore, so this gets less good. In Expanded, that's a different story, but I don't really focus on that because, you know, it's becoming less and less relevant, especially in Europe. God, though, like, I, there's got to be something that attacks for poison and so, like, with Toxapex GX, like, maybe. But, I mean, I hope you enjoy, you know, the bottom tables because that's not going to go very well for you. Um, but again, the fact that it exists means cards that we look for in the future we'll have to think about, and I think that's the point I'm trying to make in a very long-winded way. Alright, so, next up. The Snore. Uh, let's try and get the picture up that doesn't get in the way of the webcam. Is that alright? Can I move it up? I can move it up a good bit. Yeah, there we go. Okay. Dark Circle. This is like super gumshoes. Once during your turn, you can look at your opponent's hand, and then you put a basic Pokemon on their bench, and then you put three damage counters on that Pokemon. Yo, that's so good. That's so good. Like, Gumshoes' ability already, I've said many times, is probably, like, my favorite ability in, in like, across the history of the game. This, that's just look at your hand, though. This is, like, this is such, an, like, an objective improvement on that. Granted, it's a stage two, but we're seeing stage twos come in more and more. We're seeing them be more viable. Um... Again, this is more like, what do you play it with, is a question of it. Um, but uh, who cares? <laughs> it's, my, it's my thought on it. Who cares what you play this with? It's just a really good card. Zoroark is kind of something you could jump to as well, because they both have Mind Jack. Um, does Nor with slightly higher damage output for an extra Psychic Energy, which I don't necessarily like. Uh, remember as well that you're putting three damage counters on 
whatever Pokemon you drop in the bench. And necessarily you won't have, your opponent won't have a Pokemon in hand to drop down, of course, but if they do, it's like, this is better than, this is better than Pokepuff. It, like against Gyarados, can you imagine? You just take a Magikarp, put it on the bench, and then collect your free prize. Then again, you could ask, why were they holding a Magikarp against you? But if they play Town Map and they see a Magikarp and then they pick it up, you can go, aha, Rare Candy does Snore instead. Like, and that's pretty great. So, yeah. My point is, does Snore is really cool. I really like this idea. Like, th this is a fantastic ability, no question. And again, it just comes down to what else are you going to play it with. A uh, Hunch Crow, maybe? The one that does more damage for every damage counter on your opponent's board? That's a bit awkward, though, right? What else we got? Um, I do want to also talk about Meowstic really briefly, just because, hey, it's a stage one that attacks for a DCE. I like those. Uh, Vespaquin likes those. Is there any Psychic types worth hitting in the meta right now? No, because Garbodor exists and he's stopping them all from being relevant. But if there were, this is a really nice answer to it. I think Promo Mewtwo probably does the same job, just way better. But it, it exists, is all I'm trying to say, essentially. What also exists is Necrozma GX, which is a really awkward one. Ability is End of Light. Prevent all damage done to this Pokemon by attacks from colorless Pokemon, both yours and your opponent's. That's, like, just good. It's not, like, something you're going to be using all the time. Or not something that's even going to be relevant in, like, every matchup that you play. But it's good. It's it's real good. Like, no one can argue with that much. Um, One thing I will say, like, what's relevant that you're stopping here is probably, like, Mega Rayquaza is obviously one that comes to mind. Drampa as well is a pretty good one since you may or may not be playing DCE with this depending on how lists come out as well. Is it all damage or all effective attacks? Alright, well it's just damage, so Drampa can still get rid of your energy, and Raticate can still get rid of your energy. Haha. <laughs> but there's not... So there's not too much relevant about it, but it will just win you some matchups surely, right? It's like, that's always just going to be a nice thing to have on it. Uh, but it's not the main focus. Prison Burst does 10 damage, discard all psychic energy attached to it, does 60 more for each energy discarded in this way. The weird thing about this is that you have to discard, and maybe we have to wait for an English translation on this, but I trust the guys who've done this because they normally do a pretty great job. Um, it's that you have to you have to discard all the energy on it. That sounds horrible. <laughs> like, you go to the effort of 1-3's like energy on your like, well, back to square one. Um, do bear in mind Metagross GX exists which lets you, once during your turn, take in Psychic Energy from your discard pile and put it on your active Pokemon. So, naturally, you can pair it with this. But Metagross also works with Metal Energy, so you could put, like, one Metal Energy on the Necrozma, and then you only have to get rid of, like, you know, let's say you had two Psychic Energy on it. That's still 130, um, which is still quite good. And from there, you can then start, like... Sorry, something just really big vehicle just went by my house there and distracted me. But what you can do then is basically just like it means there's less energy that you need to get on because it's not going to force you to discard the metal so you can keep that on there and then you only need to like manually attach a psychic and then two abilities and, and then oh look that's you know 190 damage <laughs> like that's crazy and I think that's how it's going to end up being played is that you're going to need some way of paying for a certain amount of the attack costs without having to discard the energy. DCE does the same job as well, of course, but I like the idea of recycling it with Metagross, and that's the most natural conclusion to come to. You could just play, like, Max Elixirs and then, like, puzzle the time for the Max Elixirs back, but Jesus, that sounds really annoying. Uh, Black Ray GX is also really good. It's 100 damage to every GEX and GX on your opponent's board. There's, like, not affected by effects or weakness or resistance or anything else like that. Um, yeah, it's, like, real good. Like, <laughs> that's all I can say about that attack. Um, you're going to have a fun time with that one. You're going to be killing a lot of things. Like, not... You're going to set yourself up for, like, the 130s that I was talking about earlier. That, that's going to put everything in range now. And the way I'm discussing this means that, like, it's like, actually, do I even need Choice Band on this thing? I could play, like, Fury Belt. I could play Assault Vest or um, something better. There's a ton of tools out there. Like, it, I don't think this thing even needs Choice Band to be good. I think this is a great card. And I think Megros is already a really great deck, and I think this is just something that you could shift the focus around a little bit with it. Um, so yeah, like, it, it's just good. <laughs> That's all I can say about it. Um, I think I've covered really as much as I need to about this thing. Two or three causes is annoying, but that's that's really nitpicking, I think. Uh, I'll leave it at that. Alright, best card in set. Rhyperior, let's go. Let's go. This thing's great. Ability. Mountain Removal. When you evolve it, you discard the top three cards of your opponent's deck. Alright, how are we going to build this thing? 
So Acheron Sableye was a thing. Well, I mean, it, it was it was a thing for a little while, uh, where basically you would Acheron had the same ability as this guy. So you evolve into the Acheron, and then you junk hunt for two devolution sprays, and then you just keep doing this. Um, and that worked. You know, it, it didn't really work, but it was like after a certain point, it was like, hey, I you know the first twenty turns in the game were terrible, but then I spent two turns milling and I won, and that's how every single game with that deck went. And this is kind of the similar thing, but we don't have Sableye. We do have Devolution Spray, though. And we have the new Heat Mower, which lets you... Um, it's flip two coins, and for each head, take an item from your discard pile and put it in your, uh, in your hand. And also, Bunnel Beacon shuffle things in and stuff like this. Um, there are ways to get back Devolution Spray. However, I'm thinking we go full clunk with this thing. I'm thinking we go full-on, like, horrible deck lists, and we play three stage twos. Alright, first of all, we played this with the new Charizard GX. GX attack lets you discard the top 10 cards of your opponent's deck. We, we just go all out, right? On top of that, we play... Where are we now? Is this showing up? Just make sure it's not locked. Yeah, okay. You guys can see this. We play... Where? You, what's his name? Porygon Z. There he is. This guy has the digital reboot attack, which means you get to devolve as many of your own Pokemon as you like, and then put all those evolution cards in your hand. Right, here's what I'm thinking. We just use this, and then we just devolve all the Aggrons, and then put them all back down, and it's gonna be great. And then we play it with fire energy and like a 1-1-1 one, one, one Charizard GX line, or maybe, will I even use rare candy? I don't think so, because obviously you don't want to devolve something that you rare candied into. But this, this is just so cool. So it's gonna be horrible. It's going to spend, like, 10 to 15 turns doing, like, jack crap. But then eventually, like, by the time you get the combo going, you're going to be, hey, you got two turns to win this. And it's going to be great. Trust me. All right, that's how the deck is going to be built. Uh, you can also play this with the new Diancie, which I think is really cool. Like, just to get the evolutions going more smoothly, I'll get the Diancie in a second, then I'll explain that combo a bit better. Um, but point is, I think there's a bunch of different ways that you can play Rhyperior. And I'm going to find out which one is the least bad of all of them. Trust me. <clears throat> not not the best, the least bad. I did say that right. Marshadow GX. Shadow Hunt. You can use all the attacks of the basic Pokemon in your discard pile. Now, weird one this. Really weird one. First of all, Beatdown 120. It's a good attack. I've played Lycanroc a lot. Acceleroc does exactly the same thing. And it's pretty good once you get like two strong energy and a choice band on it. Um... You know, you're probably not going to do that with Marshadow, but it's, it's nice to know that it's there. Uh, 100 Fishers, I think, is a really lackluster attack, and I don't see most any people, like, really using it that much. Uh, great name, though. But, 150 HP, first of all. It's like Mew EX, but it has 30 more HP. I appreciate that. One Retreat Cost, also very good. Appreciate that. Focus Ash is gone. Makes this a lot worse. And Expanded, I think this is significantly better than it is in Standard. Um, a lot of one of the Japanese ideas for this thing is to actually play it with Decidueye and then a bunch of one-off attackers. So you have a Marshadow in the active for Decidueye on the bench, and then in your discard pile is like a Mill Tank, um, a Seismitoad X, like what else? You know, loads of crazy stuff like that that just is basic Pokemon that attacks. There's a um, there. It was a picture on Verbank that somebody posted from some kind of Japanese account that basically had a bunch of like basic Pokemon with cool attacks in the discard pile. Um, and the Marshadow could copy them all, and Decidueye could still go to work. And I think that, like, is a really cool idea. It doesn't translate as well into standard, because we've got less things to copy, but maybe it's something worth looking at. The big thing I think about this is you can basically take it into anything that has basics as an attacker, and be like, hey, now I beat Darkrai, because I hit it for weakness. I mean, I guess, I think I think it's a splashable fighting type, and that's cool, because fighting types aren't something that have usually been that splashable at the moment. It's just like, hey, run for Passimian and hope for the best. But that's, you know, not very good, as you might imagine. Uh, this, this is a lot better of an idea, so. I don't know. I think it's cool. I'm not sure what kind of capacity it'll be seen in, uh, but if Dark Riot, this will kind of keep Dark Riot in check if ever it gets really good. Uh... As long as you can avoid being one shot on the way back, that's going to be a big issue, I think. Because 150 is not a number Darkrai struggles to hit. So, you know, you might kill a Darkrai, they're just going to kill you again. And then you're like, oh, what do I do now? Uh, so, yeah, that's Marshadow. Now, we got another Raticate. Y'all know I like this guy. This is so cool. Th this is straight up going to be, like, not a top tier deck, but it's something I'm going to build, no no question. Uh, a load of Raticate, 120 HP. 
amazing. Um, and first of all, we also have this guy. Not pre-prepared, I just happen to have one on my desk. This is the Sun and Moon base Alolan Rattata. It has Gnaw for 20 for free, so obviously that's way better than the other Rattata, because uh, you don't want to be running energy in this deck. And a free retreat cost, also really good. So this is this is the rat you want to run with that. Um, but basically, Raticate has a free attack that says 10 damage, and if it has a tool on it, it does 50 more damage. So you put a choice band on it, and you hit 90 for literally nothing, which is really good. Um, put a bursting balloon on it. My, my idea is basically to run it like four choice band, four bursting balloon, and then an eco arm, and then puzzle the time, and make it sort of like a turbo engine like this. But the advantage being you're never actually digging for energy, so you're always, you're not stuck. You're not, like, the big, the biggest issue with things like Pazimian and Vespaquin, uh, especially in mirror matches and things like that, is that they can't dig for, is it like, it'll be like, hey, end of two, hope you didn't hit DCE, and that, that's how whatever game comes down to. Uh, my other idea with this was to run it with, like, a thick Garbodor line, not the Trash Lancha one, the Ability Lock one, and then play, like, four Flowstone, because you may as well, like... They, they work, it synergizes with both. Uh, that That's kind of my plan. Klefki as well is another option. I don't think there's much that it's relevant against right now, but it's, it might be worth throwing one or two in. Um, this isn't going to be a very good deck, <laughs> but uh, it's going to be a cool deck. Any deck that doesn't use energy and can still like attack for taking prizes, like that's, hold on a minute, that sounds pretty nice. Uh, so yeah, that's Raticate. Anyway. Guard of War GX. Not something I've looked at a ton myself, honestly. Um, but every time I read it, I'm like, yep, this is quite good. And it's the same thing here. So, Fountain of Secrets. Once during your turn, you may attach a fairy energy from your hand to one of your Pokemon. This is a great acceleration. You get two of these in play. You're getting two energy extra each turn. And, of course, it has an attack that synergizes with that. Infinite Force does 30 damage times the number of energy attached to both actives. That's just X-Ball on steroids which is, you know, quite good. And especially for a Pokemon with 230 HP and a weakness that nobody is playing, and even after, you know, last set with Alola Ninetales and Sylveon coming out and people just didn't really take to them too well, and now it's like, oh, well, we just won't play any Metal types. Uh, so, hey, that's pretty cool. Um, yeah, Twilight GX. Honestly, the card is fine for me until we get to Twilight GX. This is stupid. Cert you get to search your discard pile for 10 cards and then shuffle them back into your deck. That sounds incredible. That sounds like one of the best GXs we've had printed so far. That's amazing. For a single basic energy, you get to take 10 cards you've already used and use them again. That's nuts. You could play this in Rhyperior. <laughs> like, don't. Like, don't go too nuts. But I'm just saying, like... Any notion of a mill deck now becomes a bit like, mm, yeah, but they could just do that. I mean, like, it's it's not as bad for mill decks, but for, like, Garbodor, your matchup, like, as soon as you get into this thing, you're like, hey, I'm gonna shuffle all my crap back in that's that's so it's so good so good um like even if it was like five i'd be like wow that's a really good attack this is 10 you're gonna choose like six and then be like all right what do i do with the other ones like i don't want 10 it, it, that's just such a good number you could spend all four of your vs stickers hey they're back in it's, uh, man what an attack honestly like you'll be stuck after you take six cards or five or six cards you'll be like there's nothing else i need this is too many. It's too good. It's just such an over... Like, I don't want to say overpowered. We've never played with it yet, but... I wouldn't be surprised if we saw... If it saw play for that alone. Not only does it have an attack that's capable of a ton of damage and, like, this... We're just going to move on. That's just such a good attack. What did I have next on my list? Let me check my notepad doc. Aha. Uh -huh. Torment Spray. We're on to some trainers. I'm just doing these in the order the Poke Beach present them. So, Torment Spray, you choose a card from your opponent's hand, reveal it. If it's a supporter card, they discard it. If not, you put it back in their hand. Lackluster on its own, but with uh, Delinquent, this could be really good. So, you know, you red card Delinquent Torment Spray. That's that's a great com combo. And unless your opponent kept a VS Seeker in their hand, they're like, oh, well, you know, it happens. Um, one thing I do like about this is... Like, the benefit you get if you pull it off is really good. It encourages lowering your, lowering your opponent's hand size. I mean, a lot of the decks that are like, hey, let's build this whole combo around, take your opponent's hand from, like, 10 cards to 0 cards. Like, th they're cool, and in theory, they're really powerful, but in practice, they never work. Things like Serena, uh, that weird Glamio deck that went around a little while ago. All these kind of things that, like... Tech, like I built Apom as well. That's just don't build Apom. The new Absol that everyone thought was going to be great and then didn't do anything... Um, 
it's the same thing. It's like all these decks that are built around lowering your opponent's hand size never really work in practice. Because eventually they top deck out of it, or your combo is too slow to get going, and by the time you do, they've got a board full of things with energy on them, and also your deck doesn't have the space to run sufficient energy disruption to combat it. But it'll be interesting to see what this ends up being a part of, is I guess what I'm saying. I think this is potentially a really powerful card, so I just don't know what I'd play it in. Super Scoop Up. Uh, why? Why are we printing this again? I think everyone has kind of a love-hate relationship with this one, right? I mean, it's so fun to play, but it's also so annoying to be on the receiving end of one. Like, you know, remember Seismitoad at Super Scoop Up? Remember that. Remember when you could do that. Oh, man. It's, it's an evil card, but it's also a really fun card. And I think without you know, something like AZ, I think it's really fine. Um, is Acerola in this set? I believe she is. So I assume, like, I, if, if Acerola didn't exist, or if, like, a supporter that just picked up your Pokemon didn't exist, if you just had to rely on 4 Super Scoop Up, I think it would be fine. But you don't, and that's what makes it really annoying. Uh, look, we know it's a great card. It's always been a great card. Guzma. Sweet Jesus. This is a great card as well. It's Lazond, but you switch your own active as well. Now, Tapu Koko exists, and that's, like, the most splashable thing with Free Retreat ever, so... Yeah, you just run that, and then you're like, okay, great. So I just go into Tapu Koko, and then I retreat, and then I'm fine. Um, or you just have two attackers powered up, and you just go into the second one. Uh, this is like Lazond, but it resets Volcanion's attack. It resets Lapras's attack. It clears any special conditions you have in your active Pokemon. Really, it's just Lazond, but objectively better in almost every scenario. Uh, the only reason you would run Lazond over this is because you're worried about getting screwed over by the whole switching your own active Pokemon thing, but there are so many ways to get around that and actually benefit from it instead. Uh, so yeah. There's not much more I need to say about Guzma. Look, it's just a really good card. Wick is weird, honestly. I think it's cool hand disruption, but also like N exists and Judge exists and Lima exists and Red Card exists and, you know... Firo <laughs> exists, and Ms. Magus exists, and plenty of other things that do this better. Like, I I just, I think it's a cool card, but I don't think there are better ways to ruin your opponent's hand, and I assume that's why you're playing it, right? You're not playing it to refresh your own one, surely. Potown. Interesting card. It's sort of like a reverse magma base, where when you evolve a Pokemon, you put three damage counters on it. Three is a lot, first of all. Quite a lot. What do you play this in? A... <sighs> I assume you play this in, like, decks with basic Pokemon in them? I mean, I'm thinking about playing it in Raticate for the Vespiguin matchup, so that you hit 60 and then 90 when they evolve, and you're like, hmm. I mean, you put 30 on your own rats, but look, they're gonna die anyway, so it doesn't matter. But this is kinda cool. I like it a lot, but I have no idea where I would play it in. I have no idea what kind of deck I'd put it in. Maybe some kind of, like, bizarre... I don't know... You know that Shedinja that does damage based on the amount of damage on it? Like, and... now Floet's not illegal anymore. Look, there's gotta be something that you can play this in that'd be really, really good. There's gotta be some kind of stage one that has some... Like, not necessarily like a rage attack, but... I don't know. I'm so confused by this card, because it's just... It's not obviously good. It's just... It's interesting. And that's where I'll drop it. Like, I'm gonna need to put a lot more thought into Pose out before I come to any conclusions with it. Skip all the hyper rares. Although we do get a secret rare rescue stretcher, which is pretty pretty lit. Uh, on to the next. This is the Did You See the Fighting Rainbow section. I just, just love this name so much. Um, first one I wanted to talk about was actually all the way down here. Charizard GX. Hell yeah, it is. Wing Attack 70. Don't care. Crimson Storm 300 and discard 300. Don't care. Don't care. Just I just don't care about these attacks. Raging Out. Discard the top 10 cards from your opponent's deck. Now you're on to something. Now we're, now you're talking my language. Th that, this is like the whole reason you would be playing this for the GX attack. The, there are better things that hit these kind of numbers, including like Mega Charizard, I believe. I think. And Mega Charizard gets slightly better with Ho-Oh GX coming out, so I think if you're doing that, you play Mega Charizard instead, surely. But this, this, this attack right here, Raging Out. I'm playing this in Houndoom. Like, you can't stop me. <laughs> it's happening. Like, you, this, this thing is, I've played a lot of mill decks, and yes, 
ideally, you just want like 99% of your deck to be energy disruption and 1% of it to be actually milling your opponent. But this is so good. 10 cards is such a big number that I cannot ignore this. I cannot just not play this. Like, you have to, like, if it was like 8, I'd be like, oh, I'm not going to do it. 10. 10 is a huge number. This 10 is like, all right, I have to at least give this a shot. I can't just ignore it completely. So that's why I'm mentioning it here, because, damn, 10 is such a big... 10 can win you a game from, like, you know, by the mid-game, they should have about 12 cards left in deck. That's like a rocket's handy working a raging out, and you're winning. Like, that. that's so nuts. The power that this thing could potentially provide you, and in fact will not provide you, is crazy. Like, in practice, I don't see this working that much. But in theory, this is going to be amazing, and I'm going to play it, no question. Uh, even with just Bunnelby early on in the game, just so because Bunnelby synergizes with DCE better than Houndoom does. I don't know. Look, there's got to be a way to use this. Like I said, with Rhyperior, I play a 1-1-1 one, one, one line or a 1-0-1 one, one line of this guy. Uh, I'm finding a way to make him work. Ho oh, OGX. I like this thing a lot too. I think this is way better than people give it credit for. Sacred Fire, I think, is a bit average, but sniping attacks are always good. Like, look, even Lola Nine Tails, a sniping attack is pretty good. So let's not write off Sacred Fire right away. Does so 50 damage to one of your opponent's Pokemon for slightly more than Nine Tails does it for? Phoenix Burn does 180 damage, and you can't use Phoenix Burn next turn. Now, with Kiawe, turn one, you're gonna hit the the energy you need for this. Like, no doubt. Like, that's it's very doable to hit that amount of energy, and then you're gonna start going 180, 180, 180, and that's crazy. The whole, this Pokemon can't use Phoenix Burn during your next turn. Hey, good thing Guzma was printed at exactly the same time to reset this. Uh, what else? Like, there's loads of ways to reset this. You could play, like, Olympia, Ranger. There's tons of cards you can play that do the same thing. Um, even just a switch into a Tapu Koko, that'll do it. Like, there's tons of ways, or Wishy Washy, whatever takes your fancy. There's ways you can get around that, is my point. So, yeah, it, like, it, you 180 every turn's pretty great. There's no even energy discard on it, so you just keep all these. They just stick. So I like this a lot. Two key always into a game, and you're going to go nuts completely. Um, and I think that's super doable, especially if you go first. Eternal Light GX, put three in any combination of fire. Uh, EX or GX is on your discard pile on your bench. Mega Charizard, Mega Charizard, Mega Charizard. And then that that's great. <laughs> I think the big issue with this is that I can't Eternal Light then raging out. What I meant to say was I can't turn a light and then like I have to do it my next turn would have to be a Kiawe as well. So like it doesn't really synergize with Kiawe as far as I'm concerned. Like unless you get like like ho oh, oh, Max Elix or DCE turn one Eternal Light and then turn two you Kiawe, but you still have it attacked even though you could have just uh, I don't know, it's it's a bit awkward. Um there's like really the big targets for this are the Megas and Charizard GX right here. Incineroar is a cool idea for this, I think. Um, where basically you just take three Incineroars and put them straight on your bench. But the difficulty is, how are you going to get three Incineroars in your discard pile turn one? Uh, so a lot better in Expanded for sure, but is it even good there? I'm not sure. Uh, a fire type that is weak to lightning, though. This is pretty great. Um, most fire types being weak to water means that they just lose to Volcanion. Um, or Lapras, or any number of decks like that. This is weak to lightning, and you can tech in things that aren't weak to lightning, of course. Uh, so I think this is a fire type with good, better matchup coverage than, like, a lot of other fire types. And the reason they're not seeing play is because Volcanion exists, and because they just beats all of them, because it's part water type. So I'd, li I'd like to see that they're trying to sort of circumvent that a little bit. Uh, I like Ho-Oh a lot, that's my point. Next up, Heatmore. Outer Sleuth, you flip two coins, each head's put a card from your discard pile into your hand. It's like really bad save like because it's on a coin flip basis, but Victini exists. So if you just assume you get at least one of these, it's like, it's it's decent, it's pretty good, but it's just, is it better than Bunnelby when, you know, you could get back one and then get end anyway? Um, I don't know, and a DCE is a lot harder to find than a basic energy as well. It's a bit of an awkward one, I think, because I quite like the attack, but I just feel like in Expanded and Standard there are things that do this better. So, I don't know. And remember, it can be any card, it doesn't have to be an item or anything like that. But I think, like, in the kind of decks you would play this in, they'd be Disruption decks, and 90% of the time you're going to be getting back items. Even if you want to get, like, a Supporter, I'm not going to get the Supporter, I'm going to get a VS Seeker, because it's way more versatile. So, I don't know. I. I think it's cool, but I just don't... I think it's a bit, like... 
there are things to do with this job better than it. That's, that's my point I'm trying to make. Horsey's really cute. That's literally all I wanted to say about that line. What else came next? I will consult the notepad document. Ah, Crabominable. I did decide to talk about this, didn't I? Guts Hammer. 80 damage. Those to itself, the number of damage counters on it. Yo, this card's cool. It's not very good. It's not going to be tier 1, but it's very cool. So, strong energy choice band, 130. Hey, that's pretty good for one energy. Um, also, did you have 70 damage on you? Yeah, you're dead now. Uh, I think you're going to need some form of healing in this. I'm thinking, like, play it with Jinx or, with, like, Ribombi. They both have abilities that heal Pokemon, so something like that. Uh, Pokemon Center Lady is probably going to be in this list as well. So that if they do 130, you can go Jinx, Center Lady, and then you're down to like 60 HP. You hit yourself, you've only done one, you still got 20 left. Like, you're going to want to find a way around the whole I'm going to kill myself this turn thing. And Protection Cube is gone, and also Choice Band is better. So you're going to want to find, because 140 HP is a pretty nice number. Like, imagine if Vespa went out at 140 HP. That'd be great. Muscle Dumbbells, again, is an option for this guy. But I don't like that, because the issue I have with Dumbbells is that like, you'll hit yourself, oh, look, I've got 140 damage on me, but I'm still alive, and then your opponent's like, hey, yeah, Field Blower, KO, and I hate that. If Field Blower didn't exist, I think it would be a great idea, but it does, so that's where we're at. Um, and obviously, Choice Band is just better for damage output. So, yeah, I like this card, and I am going to try it out, but I'm not feeling top-tier hopes for it. One thing I like a lot, a Alolan Muck. This thing's really cool. Uh, great artwork on the... Uh, card by the way, this is just amazing looking, an objectively better Alolan Grimer, multiply is way better than, what, Poison Breath, oh that was such a bad attack um, Alolan Muth Muck has 220 HP, fighting weakness is a little annoying because I think there are some fighting types that could be coming up, 4 retreat cost is horrible, uh, but Psychic Resistance is pretty relevant, uh, Garbodor is still a thing and 220 HP is a big number to have Chemical Press does 10 plus 70 more for each special condition on them alright, so Muck's a Lazzle that's how we do this. So you do 140, plus the base 10 is 150, plus the bird and poison is 180, plus the choice band is 210. Wow, that's really good for a dark DCE. Like, completely, that's really good for a dark DCE. Um, on something with 220 HP and a good resistance. Like, that's nice. Uh, crunch as well. Those 100, I mean, of course, then you have to reuse the Salazzle in some capacity. There's Devo sprays. You could play Ariados because it's a little more consistent because you don't need to evolve it every turn. You can play Ariados and some Vipers, I guess, but then, like, you're going to need Skyfield and, like, Bridget's everywhere, and it's going to be a bit weird. Um, Crunch for 120 and discard one. I think this is a good attack because you're going to be chemical pressing a lot. You're, you're going to tank a hit or two, and then to be able to come in with Crunch, I think it's pretty cool. Like, to be like, oh, I can't get a Salazzle this turn. I'm just going to attach another energy and Crunch. It's a nice backup option. And speaking of backup options, Tri-Hazard GX is real good too. Uh, you just bring up a po opponent's bench Pokemon, and it's now burned, poisoned, and paralyzed. So what's that? Like, they take 30 damage initially, and they're paralyzed. So going back into your turn, the paralysis will have been cured. So, but they'll have taken 30. Let's say another from the poison would be 40. And then you can hit the whole combo thing for 10 more damage and you can basically say that whatever you brought up is going to die next turn which is kind of cool especially because it's a free attack so it didn't matter what energy you got on initially um or you can just do it and then like retreat to something else. like i don't know the fact that it's a free gx attack is interesting enough in itself i think this has a lot going for it and i think it's definitely gonna be one of the first things i actually try surprisingly enough uh, it could be in a really strong position as well i don't see it even being that weak to a lot of things off the top of my head in the meta Maybe, like, the Sidui, just because it's going to struggle to hit those numbers. Um, but other than that, I can't really think of anything. Uh, and I think once you start crunching against the Sidui, you could have a really good time. Uh, if you're willing to commit that kind of energy cost. But no, I think this is a cool card, and I can't think of anything that would be inherently really bad to face off against. Only problem is, if it did get really good, Ribombi, ex or what is it, Comfy exists, which is like Brazilian's ability, and you could just play that in everything... Um, that has fairy energy to stop it from working. So, that can happen. Diancy. Sparkling Prayer. So, your deck for a card that evolves from one of your Pokemon and put it onto that Pokemon. Alright, I'm just going to use Rhyperior as an example for this. You play Lele for Bridget for Ry 3 Rhydon. And then you Sparkling Prayer to evolve one of them into a Rhyhorn. And then, you go next turn, you go 
evolve to ride Rhyperior, and that's turn two. And then, like, you evolve... You know, the point is that you keep doing this to get them into Rhyhorns really early on, and then your Porygon's up, your Porygon Z's up, and stuff like this happens for you, and that's kind of the idea I have with it. Um, I don't think there's a lot of decks that'll see pl this will see play in. Maybe in Gardevoir GX, just because they run the same type, and Stage 2s need all the help they can get, even currently. Um... But I think it's more nice that we have it. And I think one retreat cost, again, fine. Level ball searchable as well. That makes it even more appealing for a lot of people. Um, yeah, no, I like this card actually. And I think it, I think it, I wouldn't be surprised if it's all playing a few things. Now, Noivern GX. People don't like this guy because he's Seismitoad and Giratina rolled into one. Um, I really like this because I'm going to play it probably. Do I think it be, will be as dominant as Seismitoad or Tina? No. My reasoning behind this is because not only, first of all, it's better than both those cards, I think. Because, like, you've got Grenade Hammer, or, you know, quote-unquote Grenade Hammer, Layout Sonic, is way easier to pull off because you just need to attach one more energy. Like, if you have a Double Dragon on this, you're essentially Quaking Punching or Distortioning for 20 extra damage, and then you're able to just slap on an extra basic energy in Layout Sonic for a KO. And you still get some kind of locking effect. And it's got better base damage than both Giratina and Seismitoad at their respective attacks. And it's got higher HP than both of them. Yeah, it's a great card. Like, th that's just great. The GX attack, I don't think I've even read it. <laughs> this attack to 50 damage. Okay, it's a little bit underwhelming. But it could be good against, like, oh, hey, look, now I've got an out against Gyarados. That's basically what that GX attack says to me. Because um, most of the time, you're just going to want to be locking, surely. I think it's easier to tech for, and I think decks can be more prepared for this now. Like, there's a reason that Tina sees no play, is because it's easy to get around, and things can work around that whole special energy lock easily enough, and it's it, the numbers it hits are underwhelming, it's not that tanky anymore. Um, so I think that's... This attack's kind of like, it'll beat Vespiguin and, and Gyarados, and that's about it. Um, and then the first attack is like, Still good, but we've already seen things have to play around the Sigewide Vile Plume and play around Garbodor, and they're both doing so very well. And I think this falls into the similar thing. Third of all, the biggest problem I'd see this having is weirdly enough, right? Noi Bat is a is a colorless. There is no dragon type Noi Bat, so you can't put a double dragon on a Noi Bat. That's fine, you know, you can just wait and evolve it or put a basic energy on the Noi Bat. What it means is that if I play an Espeon EX, and I devolve all of my opponent's Noiverns, the Double Dragon will then be attached to a Noibat and will then get discarded, and then all their energy will go. And that's like a really easy tech against this deck, so that that's, that's a bit weird. Like, I mean, you could say don't play it with Double Dragons, then just play it with like Dark Energy, and I think that's also very viable as well, especially because there's so many good Dark Types out there, and this is just a Dark Colorless. It's like it wants you to put it in a Dark Archetype. Um, Free retreat, actually, I want to point out, is just complete crap. The like, I don't care that he can fly. The, this, can you imagine if Seismitoad had free retreat? How good would he have been? Like, this is insane. But other than that, no, I think this is very counterable. I think there's like ways we can deal with this card, so I wouldn't be too worried about it. But I'm gonna play it because he's gonna be a lot of fun. All right, we're coming to the end. There's the Noibat in question. Agility is a great attack, though. I want to point out just for protecting it for a turn. Muscle Dumbbells was the next card I wanted to talk about. Stage 1 Pokemon have their HP increased by 40. I've mentioned a few cards so far in this little mini analysis that synergize with this, but ultimately, no, I don't like it. Uh, and my reason is, again, Field Blower exists. Like, 130 HP Vespiguin, does that sound good? Yeah, a Vespiguin that actually kills things and won't get countered next turn. Like, Choice Band's effective the turn you put it in. You slap a Choice Band on, you attack, and it's worked, it's done its job. And if they feel blow it away, it doesn't matter. If they kill you, it doesn't matter. Dumbbells is way more counterable than that. And most of the stage ones that it'll be going on are, like, ones that wants to get the extra damage output in preference to the extra HP. Uh, this could be good in, against, like, on something like a Noivern, or like a, like a Noivern GX. Like, there are GXs that are stage ones that you could say, put this on. Um, and Noivern's the one I jump to because you can item lock, and then they can't play field blower. And that's where it makes the most sense to me. But outside of that, I think the damage output is just going to be more preferable. Kiawe. This is a supporter I really like. Because, uh, you know, Lele exists. You know, turn one Kiawe is just amazing. Like, it doesn't matter that your turn ends. Especially if you went first. That's so good. Like, 
don't underestimate this guy. The turn end thing means it's going to be kind of dead from like the mid to late game on. But like it's going to create some huge threats while it's alive. Like even a turn like if you go first with Ho-Oh, get two Ho-Ohs on the bench, attach to one of them, Kiawe to the other. That's your turn. Next turn, attach to one Ho-Oh, and then you just go up with the Ho-Oh, you power it up with the Kiawe and attack. And then turn 3, your Ho-Oh might have tanked a hit, so you put a third energy on the bench to Ho-Oh. And then if you've got one ho with four energy, one ho with three energy, you've taken two or three prizes at this point. That's, that's like, really good. Really, really good. And really threatening and really quick. Um, not much... Is Blacksmith better? Yes, I think so. But we don't have Blacksmith. And, like, for the first turn or two of the game, this thing is going to be, you know... It's going to be pretty great. So I, I wouldn't sleep on Kiawe. Very good card. Plumeria, also a very good card. So discard two from your hand, then discard an energy attached to one of your opponent's Pokemon. I think it's a fair trade-off. I also think, though, that the decks that want to play this don't want to play a ton of cards that discard their own resources, like Waylord, obviously, um, and Waylord-like builds. Got one of those coming out later on this week, so look forward to that. But basically, I think there there are a lot of times, though, where like decks like that play high supporter counts. High supporter counts. And it can be nice to get your one-offs in the bin for... Um, the S Seeker. So there, you do have targets for Plumeria, but you won't have them every single turn. So it, it's up to yourself to sort of weigh whether the trade-off is on is worth it or not. But ultimately, I think the effect that this card has is just really good. Uh, I think I'd still play Flare Grunt in most cases, because usually it's just good enough. Um, and the energy is only really a threat if it's on the active Pokemon anyway. You know, you can't attack with a bench Pokemon, of course. It's just really if they're powering up something on the bench. Um... I think Crushing Hammer might be just a better trade-off for the most part. So, I, I don't know. I think it's still... It's not something I'd run four of like I run four of Team Flare Grunt in these kind of decks, but a one-off or a two-off I could definitely see. Uh, I Like, that effect's just very powerful. I do like it a lot. Also, I had a point. Yeah, an Expanded, Double Execute. Wow. Yeah, now, now you're now you're putting in the work. Uh, Mount Lanakila, basic Pokemon's increased by retreat cost are increased by one colorless. While Aqua Based exists, this is pointless and play Aqua Based instead. Um, then after Aqua Based rotates out, all your gimmick decks will have to use this instead. Uh, this will never be like really good. I don't think this will ever be amazing. It'll be as good as Aqua Based was, maybe a bit less. So you know, take that as you will. And I believe I've finally come to the end of all of my discussion here. Secret Rare Escape Rope, nice. We did not see Acerola, I'm not sure where she's coming in, but we're getting her eventually and that terrifies me. Uh, 1.9 Full Art Ho-Oh looks magnificent. I will see if he says anything about Acerola, or if anyone just wants to fill me in in the comments, because I'm not quite sure. Um, nope, it does not say. But the point is it's coming at some point, and when that comes out with Super Scoop Up, you know, things are going to get crazy. Um, but yeah, that is actually going to do it for this air review. Wow. So that was a decent amount of talking about all this. Probably a bit more than I wanted to go into. But hey, you know, it's good to get, it's good to be thorough, I guess. Um, so yeah, guys, videos are coming back. They'll be on the channel soon enough. Uh, next one, maybe tomorrow, I think I'll put up the deck analysis. Yeah, that should be fine. Um, but yeah, that's all I've got for you tonight. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you next time.